What's the haps? I'm Roka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at Elegy for a Dead World. Elegy for a Dead World is a creative writing title. It's a collaboration between Boston-based studios Pop Cannibal and Deja Barn Games. Pop Cannibal, previously responsible for uh, the wonderful Girls Like Robots, and Deja Barn for a whole range of eclectic things, including drunken robot pornography and ah, a reckless disregard for gravity. So they got some very good naming going on there. I will definitely say that for them. Before we begin, I should probably give full disclosure. I have met Pop Cannibal and Dejban on a number of occasions over the last few years. I would say I'm reasonably close to them, and that's the sort of thing that's likely to colour my opinion in this kind of thing. Uh, I also backed this game on Kickstarter whilst it was on Kickstarter, so there is some financial tie there. Not that I'm like an investor or anything, because that's not how Kickstarter works, but nonetheless, I am personally somewhat invested in this game. So these things are likely to colour my perception of the game, so bear that in mind going in. I just want to get that out there. So you know where I'm coming from. So anyway, Elegy for Dead World. This is a creative writing title, as I say, which is definitely not something that's been done before. It's definitely a unique take on things. Uh, before we actually get into any creative writing, and I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to show off gameplay, but I'll have a go. Uh, before we do that, let's have a look at the options menu, because that's what we tend to do. Now, as I say, it's a game about writing. You're not going to need a lot of graphical options. We've got resolution. That's probably about all you're going to want. Resolution and full screen. That's cool. Uh, music and sound effects can be toggled on or off. It would be nicer if those were on sliders, I'll be honest. But there you go. At least you can turn them off. And... That's about all you've got options-wise, as I say. Graphics, yeah, it, it's, you don't need any graphics options. Sound could be better. That's probably all you need. You know, it's a very simple, as you can see. We're, we are in the game here. This is the, men the menu is kind of done in the same kind of world as the worlds themselves. So we can fly around here. This is your graphical style. This is the world. This is our character. We are a little spaceman. Uh, the concept of which is our spaceman has been stranded by a mission which has gone awry to document alien worlds. Uh, we are the only survivor. It's totally okay. We're going to be rescued. But in the meantime, we need to write down our thoughts on what we think about the world. So we're okay. We've got three worlds to visit, all inspired by uh, great r British romantic poets. So we've got uh, Byron, Keats and Shelley, I think, are the three. Uh, I think if we head down there, we've got another world. So we've got three different worlds to explore, and if you click on any one of them, you will be given a selection of options. So let's have a look at uh, this one. I don't know which world's which, to be honest. And to open world. So we've got start writing, my story, so we can look up stuff I've written in the past. Commendations, we can basically give thumbs up or thumbs down on other people's stories. We can read through other people's stories. And that back out of the menu. Uh, so start. if we click start writing, we've got... I'm wondering if this is going to explain who actually wrote this one. Uh, when I have... It takes a little while for some reason to load some of the descriptions of the things. If it even loads them. It does, yeah. There's a very, very faint loading icon on the right that's, yeah. So basically, what we're going to get is we're going to get a series of eight different options for each world, which are writing prompts, and that's going to give us different sort of structures to build our creative writing works around. So this one is a letter to a loved one. So your beloved would have liked it here. Tell them why it might be a lament or perhaps an expression of joy. Uh, and then a sample text. You'd like it here. Blank. It's a bit mad libs. You gotta fill in the blanks kind of thing. So there's a sample of you'd like it here. Blank. There are wor worse places that blank. Uh, there's all, for all of them, there's a freeform writing option, which is no writing prompts. You can write anywhere, you can write anything, which is probably uh, hardcore mode for those who are actually genuinely really into creative writing. For someone like me, it's kind of intimidating. I probably wouldn't go down that route. I like having a bit of structure. And then there's, uh, they've added they've added a variety of different things, so you can do your own different interpretations on it. So the Emperor's final decree. You, the Emperor, address your subjects for the final time. Will you fill them with hope, anger, vengeance? Uh, I've got... The world is blank and I am blank. Uh, com comparisons and contrasts relate aspects of the world to each other in a set of largely freeform prompts with little structure. And there'll be different ones for each one. So if I head over to... Fly over to this one. There's one that I quite liked over here. I was playing this one earlier. There's a prompt for this one which is quite amusing actually. Which is... Start writing. There is... I presume this is Byron's world, because it describes this one as being Byron's world. So, the Four Ages of Byron's world. The colonists spent generations underground moving from place to place. You tell the story of why they could never find peace. This vacation is terrible. This is really good, actually. I was playing through this. It's quite funny. Uh, oh my god. You went to Byron's world last year, and it was so bad. The sand was too dry, and they really should clean up the corpses. Look at this place. It's so blank. And the sand blank. <laughs> that's, that's a really funny one to work through. I... Although, admittedly, it says there are t it tells you at the top, sections 10, there are 10 word, 10 prompts in there 
for you to work with. Word count, I think, is presumably the words that they've already put in there, to be honest. Uh, so, so there are ten prompts to begin writing in there. Uh, I only found nine out of ten. I'd have thought they should be reasonably easy to find. I only found nine. I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Ten choices we made. You did ten things on Byron's World. What were they? War of the Worlds? You are H.G. Wells writing your seminal 1897 science fiction novel, The War of the Worlds. No one would have believed that in the last years of the 21st century that this world was being watched by blank. So some of these are obviously based on existing worlds, uh, works. I mean, you in indeed, you've got, the dark you've got Darkness by Lord Byron. I'm not especially familiar with Byron's works, to be honest, so I don't know what that is, but you are the poet Lord Byron writing the poem Darkness in 1816. I had a dream that I had a dream which was not all a dream. The bright sun was blank and the stars blank. That may indeed be the poem that this world is based on. I don't know. I guess I'm not. I'm not up on. I'm not up, up on my uh, romantic poets, to be honest. So, uh, let's pick one. Let's uh, let's do. What else we got? We got, plundering Byron a musical. I'm probably not going to write a song. I don't think. This was once your world, you lived, you fled, and your people passed on. What remains? I was one... Ah, that sounds interesting. Yeah, let's do This Was My World. Obviously, what with it being sort of an astronaut visiting planets, quite a lot of this does have a little bit of a sci-fi twist to it. Which is cool, I dig sci-fi, but maybe it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. We've got... As we can walk around the world, we can walk very, very slowly. Uh, we do also have a jetpack. If you press up, you can ho hover a bit, and then you can fly around a bit faster. So if you want to get around quick... Not that this is intended to be a game for you to rush through, but if you want to, if you want to move around fairly quickly, you can, you can get a bit of a hover on with your jetpack. Uh, for some reason, turning around in the air drops you out of the out of the air. But then you find a quill at the bottom of the screen, and you can press tab to write. There's obviously a count in the bottom. There are 13 prompts in this area. I have so far written zero of them. So I was once here before blank, and then we sh then we type a thing. I was once here. I was once here before the cataclysm happened. There we go. There we go. We have established that there is a cataclysm on this world, but you could write whatever you want. It could be I was here before the kittens came. Actually, I, I, actually, I want to. I want to put that now. Let's, let's do. Let's let's have a world destroyed by kittens. I'm okay with this. And you can you can go back, you can edit stuff, you can change the text that's already in there as well. You don't just have to fill in the blanks. You can press tab to fill in the blanks. Uh, but you can you can do whatever you want. It's completely freeform. There is the freeform option, but then you can go hand bone on the existing prompts as well. So the kittens happened. There we go. I was once here before the kittens happened. There we go. And then we can explore the world. The world is entirely gorgeous. This is uh, Luigi Guattieri, I believe is his name. I hope I'm pronouncing that right from Pop Cannibal. He's he's done all the artwork, or very nearly all the artwork for this, and it is fabulous. This was my... This was my... What are we looking at? A lot of this is fairly abstract. I mean, it's clearly some sort of house in the background there, I guess, unless you want to say, are we looking at that structure immediately behind this prompt? Or what are we looking at? There's a weird framework in the background. A lot of this is abstract, and it's up to you to interpret it however the heck you want. So you could say, oh, that's those are clearly rugby posts in the background. This must have been my personal rugby pitch. It, do, do you play rugby on a pitch? Is it, I don't know. I think it is. This is my personal rugby pitch. And you can add extra sentences. It, it's, it's kind of like, it's just one blank, but you can add entire sentences. You can add entire pages in there if you want. I loved rugby. There we go. You can go into the house. Press tab or up to use the doors. We enter the library of some sort. With a that's just un unreasonably huge writing prompt at the bottom. This is where I learned about. I don't know. What what did we learn about on this planet? You can make up whatever you like. This is where I learned about. Maybe this was where we were when we discovered the kittens were attacking. This is where I learned about the invasion of the kitten. That's kitted. Kitten constructor fleet. I'm basically likening kittens to Vogons in this, I will note. So yes, kittens are Vogons. Why the heck not? Got some strange artifacts in the background again. Totally up to you to determine what the heck it's gonna be. This was our final defense against 
the kitten invasion. It failed. I don't know what it was, but it was a weapon. That was supposed to be the weapon. That was the one to save us all. It didn't happen. Got a building over here. Let's head into the building. Some ancient hall with red things falling from the floor. From the ceiling? From the floor? From the ceiling. And candles on the floor. Here they slaughtered us all. And that's why I... That's why I fled. Sure. I fled from the temple when the kittens came. And we can wander on. It, it's completely linear, all these levels are just keep walking until you find the next prompt. Which is why I'm so surprised that I totally managed to miss a prompt. So we can go into this room. And here we've got some kind of pods. These were my... Um, what, what would these be? What could these possibly be? These were be- these were my... What, what, what- I'm trying to think of something silly that one, one might keep in a pod. These were my... Grandparents. They froze... Themselves... Until... We discovered... A cure... For... Bonitis. Is that how you spell bonitis? Yes, okay, there we go. Nothing like a little bit of a Futurama reference, because why the devil not? Cool. Got another prompt on the outside of the building. We built great... Towers. I think. This looks like the bottom of a tower. We built great towers, which ended up... Cr crushed before the kit... Turns mighty poor. There we go. In here we have. Oh, there is a prompt here. Maybe I think I'm. W I remember not finding anything in this room before, so maybe this is where the prompt was that I totally missed. Again, we've got a, we've got a very abstract structure here. It's like, what are we looking at? Who knows? Who could possibly say? Make it up. That's what we're here for. It's creative writing. Ten million people. Did something here. Ten million people cowered before a kitten army here before being silenced in what, what how would the kittens destroy a world? This is this is what we need to know. Before being silenced in the blink of an eye by kitten death rays. There we go. Kitten death rays. I'm not very creative, what can I say? So onwards. Eight out of thirteen. We have five more prompts. And I've got an outside, we've got entire different areas, got a nice icy planet. I did see one story that just had one chunk of text in it, and like it just said, this is Hoth now. It was like, really? That's your story? Okay. <laughs> On the surface we came, returned to... Uh, on the surface we came, returned to... Hoth. Now all I can think is Hoth now. <laughs> returned to Hoth. Uh, returned to... Fight the kitten... With... With... Renewed... Vigor. There we go. This is this is our final stand, the Battle of Hoth. We had snow speeders and everything. It did nothing. The kittens came with attacks. We have, but inevitably, the kittens. A, how do you spell it? Is it? It's all caps, isn't it? A T. A T's. Where? Too mighty for our feeble snow speeders. I know that's not how that one actually played out, but hey. This isn't canon, this is me making random crap up. When I return here, I see... I see... What do I see? 
I see the souls of an entire civilization lost. There we go. A giant solar eclipse, or maybe just a giant floating orb in the sky. Interpret it how you will. I now live in fear that the kittens will return for me. But I wish I could have... I now live in fear that the kittens will return for me. But I wish I could have... I don't know, what, what, what do I wish I could have done? Are we observing the black hole? Solar eclipse? Whatever the heck we're looking at? I imagine a black hole would be a little more... ...swirling than that. Fast. It's not, it doesn't, doesn't tend to just be a black orb, really. I now wish I could have... ...done more in the great... ...kitten... War. Great Kitten War. I don't know. I'm running- I'm running out of inspiration here. I feel like- this, is, this seems like a significant structure that should be a prompt. It does not appear to be a prompt. It's very cool the way sort of elements of the background and mid-ground and foreground kind of line up like that and you end up with scenes like that. Which are really cool! This is really awesome. A gorgeous art style, I will say that again. Because it's worth reiterating. And now, all that's left are Poor prints in the snow. Uh, that's not how you spell snow. Snow. Now all's left are poor prints in the snow. A memory of a bloodier time. There we go. That is the story of how Byron's world came to be ravaged, destroyed, and completely exterminated by an army of kittens in their constructor fleet. And then, at the end, we can publish our titles to be put out on the Steam Workshop for everybody in the world to see, so... We can edit the title. And give it a title. Can we click on that? The Kitten Wars. Done. Maroka, a date unknown, published. I was once here before the kittens happened. <laughs> That's, oh my god, it gives you the first sentence as an excerpt. I hadn't even picked up on that before. Oh god, that's, that's such a good first sentence as well for that, I feel. I know I'm blowing my own horn there, but holy shit, if you've just got one tagline for a, for a story. I was once here before the kittens happened. I love it. I love it. Publish now. So that will now presumably be winging its way through the ether to the Steam Workshop and good lord, other people will be able to read it and give me thumbs up and thumbs down on that and that's the thing they can do. And as I say, this is, is obviously a very arty experimental kind of title and it's definitely not going to be a lot of people's cup of tea but I think if anybody's got any vague interest in writing, creative or otherwise, this is a really cool, unique title they absolutely need to be checking out. And then, uh, once we're done, it then gives us an opportunity to read someone else's published work. So, we can read my published work that I just put out, The Kitten Wars. Uh, read someone else's work, which is Initial access inside geothermally heated cave. Some sunlight admitted from above through large glass panes. Air highly regulated here. Which is clearly someone just doing a scientific study of it. Mapping the moon. They are clearly just going through and doing a literal a survey of it. It's entirely up to everyone to how they want to hear it. I mean, if we want to have a quick glance at this, read someone else's work. This is how it's presented in a kind of book format. We get some kind of snippets of screens from there. So, we've got that initial sentence I just read. Diagrams on the inside of the cave surface record information about the movement of astronomical bodies that cannot be seen from inside the cave. There are 29 here, so I don't know if this is like a freeform writing one. Several metal-based placards, roughly, roughly two and a half meters in height, performed preliminary survey, survey for archaeological team. Halverson will, of course, neither approve money for survey teams, not sure why I'm bothering. Numerous buildings have been built inside the cave, perhaps for privacy, if not for shelter. Statue representing planet's yellow moon, various writings underneath containing offers and pledges for inhabitants, and so on and so forth. So we can go and read other people's stories and then... And then at the end of it, he'll give you an opportunity to commend them or otherwise. So you can, uh, it's basically a 
thumbs up system so you can say, yes, I like this person's writing. And the three achievements that are in this game are literally tied to getting commendations on your work. So you need to compete for good, good works. There's uh, something to strive for there. So I'll say, I think this is a very, very interesting title. I think this is, I think, like I say, if you're into, into writing in any way, shape or form, you should probably be checking this game out. This will be available on Steam in the very, very near future, and it will be available for, I believe, $15 or your original equivalent. And yeah, that should just about do it for today. This is Elegy for a Dead World. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. This has been, as I say, Elegy for a Dead World, and I'll see you next time. Yeah!